I'm going to do two things in this video. As promised, uh, first I'm going to translate all of this into differential form language in preparation for doing it more generally with differential forms in n dimensions. And then I'll, there's this uh, extra credit problem which was proving this theorem and I might as well go ahead and work that out um, to see. And again that's going to be something that's going to be generalized in terms of general differential forms. So a couple purposes in this video. So first of all um, we start out, let's look at theorem 1. What's the translation of this? Let f be a divergence free vector field. Okay, so that's going to be let alpha be a closed. Now remember divergence is uh, the d operator when alpha is a two form. Okay, so let alpha be a closed two form on um, all of R3. And that's crucial, although we'll, be, we of course, generalize it later in a minute. Um, then uh, alpha is exact. Oops, not sigma. Alpha is exact, i.e., if d alpha equals 0, then alpha equals d beta for some one form beta. Pretty cool. An implicit description. You calculate, you take your alpha that you're interested in, and you look at the d of it, and you see that it's 0. Is equivalent to an explicit description, a sort of par parametrized or constructive description, where you just take any beta you feel like and create alpha out of that. So all examples of the implicit description are created in a very simple way. And it's just so beautiful that it's the same operator to do both, um, just in different, in different degrees. Okay. So first question, what's the translation of this guy? Um, okay, given alpha equals d beta, is beta unique? And of course it's not. We could say, uh, we could change it to beta prime equals, let's say, beta plus gamma, gamma, where d, uh, d gamma equals zero, any closed one form. So we can add a closed one form. Okay. Now, closed one forms, oh yeah, those usually, certainly on all of R3, closed one forms in R3 are of the form gamma equals df, where f is a function. So this is what we see again, like in the previous video, the non-uniqueness in the explicit way to describe alpha by as d beta, that leads to exactly the same question. Oh, it's got to be a closed one form. Oh, is that exact? Is that df? Well, if it's on all of our three, it is. But if we weren't one connected, if we had taken like a, um, a circle out or a line out or something, then this wouldn't be true. So even though we started out being, anal being interested in sort of the um, the two-form analysis of the topology of our space, we can actually be led back to the one-form analysis as well. Um, that goes in a wonderful direction of like sort of the whole chain of say five forms to four forms to three forms to two forms, etc. Um, but that's better. That's for a later video if I ever do that. Okay. Um, it can get a little hairy, and it's very helpful to have the abstract algebra background for that. Okay. So now let's look at the translation number two. M is an arbitrary open subset of R3, S is a surface. Okay, and let F be a vector field. Well, that's going to be let um, alpha, ooh, it's bold, be a two form, because we're going to be taking the divergence of it. Okay, alrighty. And this is going to be alpha. I'll let it be bold. I don't have to worry about that. Okay, so div F equals zero. That's going to translate to, um, oops, D alpha equals zero. It's closed. So if the form is closed and the surface is closed, must we have the integral, this is just becomes, oops, alpha equals zero. And the answer, of course, is no. And the analog of this is, we, we talked about this already, that we just take the gravity vector field and we turn it into a two-form in the standard way. Okay, we'll, we'll see that more explicitly in a minute. Okay, um, suppose div f equals zero. Okay, so that's again going to be just d alpha equals zero and that s is a boundary. Now that's the strong condition. Must we have the integral of alpha 
equals zero? Absolutely. That's just Stokes' theorem. The integral over s, I'm not going to worry about a double integral because I don't usually do that for forms, of alpha. Well, we know that there's a better way to write s. It's the boundary of E. And see how this just becomes so easy and very, very parallel to what was in the first topology uh, handout that I did a few videos on a couple while, while ago. That's going to be the integral over E of d alpha. And that's been assumed to be 0. And we're done. OK. Now, similarly here, we replace this with the stronger condition. Suppose alpha is known to be exact. Oh, I really don't like the bold there. Uh, oops, let's see. Unbold at all. OK. Suppose alpha is is exact for some, in other words, this is a one form, for some one form beta on M, and that the S is only known to be closed, it's not known to be a boundary. Must we have that the integral of alpha equals zero? Absolutely. And it's just Stokes' theorem, but in the other, uh, in another degree. I know that. Okay. So here, the integral s of alpha, we don't change this thing. We don't re rewrite this guy. We write this as d beta. Alpha is special because it can be written as d beta. Now we use Stokes' theorem in the other direction. This becomes the boundary of s. Uh, no, that's not what I want. There we go. Boundary of s of beta. And we know that the boundary of s is 0, and so this integral is 0. Okay. And of course, here, it's the if we have both strong conditions. If alpha is exact and that the surface is a boundary, and must we have the integral of alpha? Absolutely, for both reasons. Stokes' theorem applied to the one form beta, or Stokes' theorem applied to the two form alpha. Either one can be used to do this. Okay. So, in the differential form language, I would say problem two makes clear the sum relationship between being an exact two form and having certain surface integrals be zero. Okay. And it's analogous, it's exactly analogous to the one for uh, exact one forms for exact one forms, where we can guarantee that a one form is exact by showing that all circulations are zero, all integrals over closed curves. Okay. So here's theorem two, okay. We need this to be, uh, let alpha be a two form. Define a nice on M such that the integral over any closed surface S in M, oh, I guess really integral of alpha over any closed surface S in M is equal to zero. Then there, then alpha is exact. I'll just say, boop, then alpha is exact. In other words, alpha is d beta. And this is, again, I'm not going to prove this theorem. It's a big theorem that says that you can detect the existence, the able to sort of integrate alpha by and, and find it sort of an antiderivative of it um, by integrating it over close, all closed surfaces and saying, saying it's equal to 0. OK. So now we can just change this. Let m be a two-connected open subset. Then any closed two-form on M, oops, that didn't work, on M is exact. Very, very tight. And the two and the two, it's crucial that those match. And the analogous statement for conservative is that if you're on a one connected space, simply connected, then any closed one form is exact. You just change the twos to ones and it's exactly the same. And, that, and the three, this really, we'll discover later, that this has nothing to do with, with whether you're in R3 or R2 or R17. It's really about if you're on a two-connected space, then any closed two-form is exact. We won't prove that in massive generality, but it's true in massive generality. OK. And then if we want to be really explicit about what can go wrong, we take R3 minus the origin. And we already did A. Now the gravitational vector field, what's that going to be replaced by? Let's do a display. So that's going to be alpha. Well, no, actually, just, let's just call it g tilde, because that's what it is. Uh, it's tilde that sucker. OK. And it's going to be 1 over 4 pi. Oops, that's a chi, not a pi. OK. And then it's going to have a denominator of r cubed. And then I need to take the radial vector field and turn it into a two form. We know how to do that. That's x 
dy wedge dz plus y dz wedge dx plus z dx wedge dy. And that's the standard way of turning a vector field into a two. Oh, this is oh, it's a uh, it's star g tilde. There we go. Wanted to. So we the g tilde would be a, a one form. We really need it to be a two form here, so that it has a flux integral over a surface. And this is exactly the analog. So this, um, what do we want to show? We want to show that this is closed. Very similar calculation. I'm not going to do it out. It's not amazingly um, enlightening. This turns out to be a closed form. Go ahead and do the calculation if you don't believe me. But it has non-zero flux. Well, we've basically seen that calculation through the unit sphere. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to, in another video, I'm going to talk about how you do that more in general. Um, but right now, I just want to do the translation. And because it has a unit flux through the unit sphere, it has the same flux through an arbitrary closed surface. Just translating what we did before. Okay. And of course. Here, if we have, let's say, oh, let's see. Now, now I'll use alpha for just a random arbitrary um, closed one, uh, closed two form on R3 minus the origin. Let S be the unit sphere, and let A be the integral over that sphere. And this just becomes uh, alpha. Show that alpha minus a g tilde is a curl. I don't need that bold. Oh, no, not a curl, is exact. In other words, if I subtract off the standard, uh, the correct multiple of the standard example, I get something that's kind of trivial, just d of beta. Okay. And the proof is exactly the same, just using theorem 2. Similarly, if I take out endpoints, I'm just going to have to have mul all kinds of multiples of shifted versions of this Coulomb or gravity vector field or whatever you want to call it. And I, in order to turn an arbitrary closed two form and modify it to be exact. OK. Um, actually, I'm, I'll save even for a different video the, the extra credit, because it's, it's a different kind of field.